How many teams have reached the final of a major European club competition without playing a single game at home? Because that is the achievement of FC Dnipro, prevented from playing their home games in the native city of Dnipropetrovsk and instead forced to play all eight Europa League home ties here at Dinamo Kiev's Olympiski Stadium in the capital. The semi-final second leg victory over Rafael Benitez. Napoli took Myron Markovic's men through to the final against Holder Sevilla to be played in Warsaw at the end of the month. So we have to ask, who are FC Dnipro and how did they manage it? And Dnipro are a team who probably people outside Ukraine wouldn't have given a second thought to and now there they are in the final. This is their stage, it's their chance to do something on a European level. Dnipropetrovsk was founded in 1787 by Catherine the Great, was originally known as Yekaterinoslav. It became known as Dnipropetrovsk after the revolution in 1917, based on the Dnipro River, which is the, the first part of the name. They were the first Soviet team to turn professional, but they've never been able to break into the big two in Ukraine. Uh, Shakhtar and Dynamo Kiev have always had more money than them. Their great successes, you have to look back to, to the 80s, 1983, they won the league for the first time, and then 1988, and the FN Kuchevsky, who in a sense, although he died in a car crash in August 2006, is the architect of this side. It was him who oversaw the construction of the, the academy, and that's been hugely important in terms of this team. If you look at the squad, 12 of, of, of their 20-odd man squad are homegrown players. So they, they've always had to produce their own players because they didn't have the financial resources to, to bring players in. The first progress of the Europa League this season has been a combination of riding their luck and some really strong performances. So they only made it through the group stage when they scored four goals in six games after a goal for Karabakh against Inter in injury time was probably wrongly disallowed. You think of the semi-final as well against Napoli, when their equaliser in the first leg in Naples was, was clearly offside. So against that, you think back to the game against Ajax, when although they only went through in away goals, it was a classic European performance. They sat deep, they broke well, and the key goal in Amsterdam uh, was, was it's exactly the way they've tried to play, this, this counter-attacking football, Conor Pianka picking the ball up on the left, cutting in field and, and scoring with a shot from outside the box. His pace on the break is absolutely key to how they play. Very strong, solid defensive side, but they have ridden their luck to get this far. If you look back to the celebrations after the semi-final, thousands of people pouring on the pitch in Kiev. I think that's indicative of what this means, not just for Dnipro, but for the whole of Ukraine. That pitch invasion, there was something quite reminiscent of Sernesvejda in 1991 when they reached the European Cup final as Yugoslavia was falling apart. You have people who've had nothing to celebrate for years, um, very aware of a conflict approaching, um, this great release of tension and, and a, a, almost a hysterical joy, the, the huge banners, the singing of the Ukrainian national anthem. There's a sense this is really a, their, their progress is not just about the club, it's about the whole country. In terms of prediction, you look at Sevilla and how well they've played, you look at their experience in the tournament, the fact that they, they could become the first team ever to win the tournament for a fourth time. It's hard to, to have them as anything other than favourites. But having said that, Nipro have, have shown great doggedness to get this far. I think they've got a sense of their own, their own destiny. I still think Sevilla will win, but it's not beyond the bounds of possibility that Nipro could hold them. And certainly, if they can hold out for an hour, 70 minutes, then you start to think, yeah, maybe they can make a goal late on. I genuinely think you can look through the history of La Liga and there isn't a single league title success that is as impressive, improbable, as unlikely uh, and, and as frankly miraculous as, as Atletico Madrid's title last year.